Welcome, this is Sandra Umbleton, and I am coming to you today, the Divine Temple of the Holy Grail, and um, yeah, I'm just, my first message is monkey see, monkey do. As we release our judgments and our past held beliefs of what we were told was a lie, and now we're moving into understanding truth. Um, I think um, one of the videos I was watching that was helping me understand what gifts the galactics have brought to us um, in order to help us um, lift our frequency uh, when we are in the caught in the lower vibrations of the 3D dimension. That means when our minds and our thoughts become so preoccupied with what's happening in our physical world that we stop searching uh, for our higher self. The, the journey towards self-discovery and going within and finding that stillness is very difficult when you're lost in the being, doing, sorry, when the, you're lost in the doing, gotta do, gotta do, rather than moving into the I'm being in the moment. I'm being here and I'm in the observer. I'm watching myself and I am taking in some deep breaths. Those of us who got to teach, I love to teach. The reason I love to teach is I love sharing wisdom because I love learning. And I'm always guided to what's coming next, to what to learn next, because it comes to me. And I'm open up myself to Dr. David Hawkins uh, numerous times on my journey. Right now he's back and I'm listening to him and um, what, it, what I was reminded of today is that which it is that you are, you bring forth in the field. In other words, your very being, you cannot help but be what it is, who it is that you are. In any given moment, you're showing up, but so is the adversary and it's critical of who you are and tells you not to be this. And then you turn on the uh, you know, TV and then you're all of a sudden, well, you should look like this and act like this and this is what's everybody doing and what's wrong with you and why aren't you doing this and this. So you're being taken out of the truth of who you are, being told who to be and getting back or, or receiving the awareness oh wait, this is what I'm supposed to look like right here, right now. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right here, right, right now. And as much as the 3D world is trying to pull me out of my, on, off my path, off my journey, uh, like get a job, you should be doing this. I'm, you know, uh, I, I better clean the basement. I better do this. I've got to, there's all the, you know, there's all these things that are coming at me about you shouldn't be, who it is that you are because if you're starting or not starting if you're um putting yourself out there as who you are uh just the way you are um it's gonna be too real and and we're not there yet we as a collective in 3d uh are not ready to receive the 5D vibrations or voices or information yet. So it hurts them to hear us as much as it hurts us to turn on a certain platform on television and everything's negative and dark. It's a stab, it's a stab, it's a hurt in your frequency. As painful as that is to us to, to be in that energy, it's as painful for them to be in ours. Well, it just came through. So that's a, a really good realization because you can relate now how our fields are beginning to separate and that the one field and way of being is abhorrent to the other field and way of being. And so the, the, the gap becomes 
wider and wider and wider and wider. And as this gap begins to appear and move us apart in the way we see things, the way we view things, our optimism, our idealism, our, our, our hurt and our pain and our negativity, um, those lower frequencies are going this way and the higher vibrational frequencies are going this way. So that's why they're saying, you know, keep yourself up, keep yourself positive. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been getting pulled down in the 3D, pulled down in the 3D um, just a lot lately. And, and I'm aware of it. I'm in it. But I know enough that it will pass. I'm going to say that again. Say it to myself so that I can hear it. This will pass. And it won't always be like this. It's going to pass. And these are temporary measures that we want to adapt until we get to that higher frequency. Because there's a warfare to keep us here. There's a warfare to pull us down. And those who are going want you to go too. They don't want you. It's like the crabs, you know. You're in a crab bucket. The crabs all trying to, to um, crawl up to the top and get out. But as soon as they get right at the top, the other guys come pull them back down. It's, it's, it's nobody wants you to be better or get a better break or to be going to heaven when they're not. So it's like the holding on, we don't want you to go. So things are brought to you that are like, uh, like they're ammo at you, like it's a bang challenge and you got to react. And are you going to react in your lower chakras, react and act like an animal and be angry or fight? Or, or, or are you going to fall for that? Are you going to fall for that? And I'm guessing um, right now, if, if, the situation feels overwhelming where you are. It's overwhelmingly heavy. It's overwhelmingly hopeless. You're so in the 3D. The world looks completely like it's going to hell in the house, but it's hopeless. Hand basket. It's hopeless. It's, 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 that's when you realize this is not, that's not a true thing. It's not hopeless. It's never hopeless. It's never hopeless because God runs the show. And he's only going to let this team go so far and this team go so far. Game over. Like he'll call. He'll call the shots. So I'm losing that train of thought there. So we'll let that be okay. just as watching this too. I'm going back to uh, why I love teaching. Why I, do, why I love teaching. There's nothing that makes me feel better than helping somebody out. I just get a natural, oh good, I helped somebody. Good, I'm doing my job here. Oh, I helped somebody. You know, that that's that's a kick for me. So that must show you there's an angelic aspect, right? Because, you know, those little angels of God, they just want to help everybody. That's what they're doing here, is helping everybody. And if you do, you feel, oh, I'm doing my job. I'm on my path. I'm in the moment. I was sent here. I acted properly. I was aware of what was happening. I witnessed. I felt where, why am I here? What am I doing here? And I was able to contribute this in the situation. I was able to contribute this energy in this situation because I was called to this situation. Being in the awareness of always of why, it's like, why are you being called here? What, what is, what is happening here? And, and he, my biggest argument, I'm going off here. I argue with it. I argue with it when I get the right guidance or the right direction, you know, like I'll argue with it. Hmm. I 
Uh, I'm just here. There's so much to be said right now. There's so much. There's so much that's going on that I want to share. Mm hmm. What's first? Okay, I'm hearing. Um, hold on. Oh, yes. This is a very important lesson I wanted to teach. And the lesson is on revelation, revealation, like a revealing time. So what does a revealing time mean? What it, if we're in revelations, what's a revealing time? Well, I'm thinking the revealing time that you're seeing in the Bible is the person's interpretation who wrote it what was being revealed to him at that time. So if we're in the time of revealing, he's sharing with us things he saw. And I really think we can let it go by saying, but that's not what we're going to see. Because as creators, we begin to create who it is that we are in the now time. And then... That which we are is brought to us. That which we are is brought to us. And it reveals itself to you. It's like all of a sudden, and this happens. You're going, what? I was looking at this. And it's like the veil lifts and you see something different. And you're... You're revealed something from the other side. Something from the other side is going to go, I want to reveal something to you. And you're going, okay, what is it? And then they're saying, when you're meditating, there's a candle um, uh, lit, reflecting the light at night. The shadows are going on the wall. And behind my chair, Mary appears. Mary Magdalene appears. Myself, like my higher self is there, but she's looking and the, it's like the reflection is like a, a nun, right? Like it looks like the shadow of a nun, um, which is a bride of Christ, isn't it? Doesn't the nun represent the female bride of Christ? So the female bride, bride of Christ vision is appearing in my ordinary living room and someone can walk in and go, oh, that's just a shadow on the wall, on a wall, and not even look at it. But you're hearing, that's not just a shadow on the wall. You're receiving a message through the shadows um, of who it is that you are, of what you're reflecting, of what is what is in your past, what is in your shadows. And that is, is, is the Mary Magdalene, is the, is the bride, the feminine of the, the feminine Christ, the feminine Christ being revealed um, because she's been hidden for so long. And um, yes, I've just been recently uh, also reading another book and uh, I don't want to hold it up or give it any credence. I'll just, it, Revelation of the Holy Grail and uh, very much information in that, but it helped me realize that the Freemason, the Illuminati, you know, you know, all these people were all so set on erasing any information about the female Christ. I think that was the darkest con of man. The darkest secret was the ones they were trying to keep was, oh yeah, there wasn't just a male Jesus, there was a female Jesus. And she could do the same thing. She could, well, she didn't do the same thing. She did things she could do, right? And the things that she could do were erased, they were taken out, they were ignored. She was obliterated from history. And they think they're so smart wiping her out and having these big conspiracies and nobody's gonna guess, <laughs> you know, that there was a female Jesus too. Yeah, we've done a great job erasing her all through history until now. Until now. All dark secrets will be revealed. And the dark con of man is that the darkest thing they've ever done is take away man's mom, female Christ. 
Yeah. Yes, take away the mirror that was Mrs. Jesus. And now you're being shown you never were orphaned. You never just had a father. Your mother was with you. And they did not want you to know that the mother was with you. And she was kept silenced by the acts of men, by the lower kingdoms. They didn't want to hear about a feminine Jesus. They wanted to control everything. And then God steps away and goes, have at it. And just about when the earth and everything is totally destroyed, the mom is starting to show herself and say, I've been here all along, all throughout history, in many life forms, in many meat suits, but that eternal soul has been here all along. It was just hidden in a cup, right? Mm-hmm. And just like the Christ energy spirit has been in lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, uh, coming into different bodies, different souls. Um, like, like, there's one big soul, and it usually does the same big job. Like King Arthur it was George Washington, and um, and Saint Francis, King Arthur. So um, that soul's been a lot of big souls. And that's a lot of lifetimes to wake up to or to be given the gift of, hey, that's who I was. And now I'm wondering when people say, I'm Mary Magdalene, I'm Cleopatra, I'm Mary, I'm this. I'm wondering if those are the 12 tribes for the females. Like, um, when we remember our past life or think we were someone great in a past life, that female head was your mother. So Cleopatra was your mother. If you think you're Cleopatra, Cleopatra was your mother. If you think you're Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene was your mother, right? If you think you're Mary uh, uh, and Joseph, you're Mary, uh, then then that will be um, the same. Mm -hmm. So those of us who believe us ourselves to be those big figures, they actually are our star seed, like where we originated from, like that light, the female Christ is in many women right now, many women who are knowing and believing that they are the feminine Christ. They're in the Christ mind and they're awakening because they have been Christed in a past lifetime. They have achieved the eternal realm in a past lifetime. And the only time you can be awarded an eternal realm is if you have the coming together of the souls and the physical of the female and male original seed. It's the original seeding of the couple that because they seeded their bloodline, their Cleopatra's, their uh, Jesus's, their Mary's, uh, from just that have descended down and down and down, right? Have all our descendants of the coupling of the original star seed, Adam and Eve, right? The, it's saying the the original star seed for that template. So the original templates are coming forward. They say we're in a time where we're revealing who our past lives are. I'm going to speak it to you, but you might not get the awareness of it right right away. Until you're ready to receive it. So when we're being made aware of 
past souls coming forth and shining their light and telling everyone, um, you know, I'm carrying the Christ, right? Um, those people are from a certain lineage. They're from a certain lineage. So what I wanted to get to from there is that if um, you discover in a past life, you might have been a, a wife of a president or something, right? Um, there's chances are you've had other lifetimes, other Christed, other lifetimes where you were bride to Christ. You were bride to Christ. And then if the Christ energy shows up in Lincoln, then you're the bride to the, to the Christ in that incarnation acting and being the Holy Grail in that incarnation to the Christed individual. And so we'll be made aware of who are the people we Christed. So those who are here from the eternal realms, when you coupled with another soul and you Christed them, you gave them eternity. You gave them the right as a soul to exist in the eternal realm. So I'm going to tell you from what I know how many souls I've Christed. As the grail, how many times God has sent me here to be at one minute, to physically come together and put on the mask of eternity with God, move into the chosen people, the Israel, right? How many souls have I, as a, as a grail, come into in order that they could be Christed and have their place in eternity? And I believe these are the souls of kings that have been made Christ through their coupling with the grail. Just like the coupling with the Christ makes you the bride. Okay? So you're either enacting the female incarnation or the male in this lifetime. Okay? So um, these are the uh, individuals that I have. Um, um, these are the individuals that I have uh, had that experience with. Uh, that was one who just walked in the room. That's King David. Um, yes, I'm the, the wife and the God mirror to King David, who is also uh, in another lifetime, King Henry VIII, both the same soul, both the same lifetimes. And also that soul is uh, Santa, Santa Claus, the real, uh, the real original, uh, you know, Santa, that, that's who he is. And then um, in past lifetimes have made eternal Lord Pascal or King Baroka. In past lifetimes, I have Christed King Arthur. In other lifetimes, I have Christed Jacob and um, Ezekiel, Elijah. Um, and then this lifetime, there's been three, uh, one, two, three, four individuals that are not, uh, that are, um, I want to say they're, they're kings, but they're not awakened. They're not awakened. Uh, I don't want to name any names I'm hearing, but there's four other kings, that are um, alive, at, one is not, uh, so I don't want to mention them while they're still physically present in a body, unless they I, I meet them or contact them, then I'll tell them. Mm -hmm. I better not say that here. Um, but these individuals have come through eternity and have incarnated now to reconnect with their queen. They're reconnecting with their queen, the, the kings that are coming to me in my now experience. So I'm 
having past souls and have had for uh, since about 2006 have had these past beings, eternal beings show up and log in and say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Some of them might not be awake yet when they sign, but they have the potential in them to awaken to that which they are. But they sign this book and it, it's, um, it's like saying, um, I'm a Christed individual. I'm an eternal individual. I am in the realm of eternity. Now, whether I shine this lifetime and, and, and I'm put my light right out there and be a big, big, big light or whether I'm very personal and keep it to myself and I'm big light. You can choose to do that. And there's a lot, most of them choose to just keep it to themselves and feel that light and, uh, and be that light without, without, um, making themselves a big deal, like a king or something like that, right? So these people are coming forward. Um, the 500 are the people that I was asked by God to collect that were present at the time of Christ, but a lot of them that show up, they had even bigger contributions as their soul progressed through history. So usually their biggest contribution comes for, forward first, so I can identify them easily as who they, their biggest accomplishment, what you've done as a soul, right? Like I've had Isaac Newton sitting in my living room, a real person, and, and, and receiving the knowing of who it is that he was, he might not get it, but I, I am receiving in my knowing the information of who these people are. So, um, what am I getting to? I wanted to mention that, um, so being asked and guided to find um, these souls that uh, were present at the time of Christ, um, there were 500 that rose with Christ, and I believe these are the ones, you know, the graves open and there's 500 and they rose with the Christ because Christ at the time when he rose, it was eternal. And these are also souls that are eternal. And I'm saying whether they, whether we see them uh, making huge contribution or quiet contribution, they're, they're here and they're, it's like they've logged into this. And, and this is the acknowledgement or, or of, of um, those souls may be, Coming in to say, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, this is who I am and I'm back. And the book they've been asked to log in or register as they awaken, their soul finds their way to the registry. It's like a registry of, of these souls. So um, I w I've collected over 500 uh, souls. And th from that, they're eternal beings but unawakened and they can be unawakened and this is what i'm seeing right now is i'm seeing some big souls and people who i've said you know you were this you know you were king arthur you know you were this right and they hear it from me but they don't know it they 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 hear it from me but the, it, it it's like they're they're not haven't received the real knowing of who it is that they are so they hear me so um it's like that big soul, let's just say King Arthur, um, is, is caught in the lower dimensions to the point where, I don't know, if he really is the true one, then uh, I come here and then I'll pull the sword from the stone. In other words, it's like a, a breaking through to, an, to the, the veil with the sword, cutting through the veil and seeing the truth. And then once you see the truth and you understand who it is you've been you really are and who you've um it's been suppressed so now you come up and you oh my god i'm this big soul um there's more being revealed more and more and more so um i did watch this uh video about uh, ishmael press and this guy gail talking about your rh negative and positive and um Hmm. that the negative is, uh, there's less of the people that carry a negative uh, blood type and that 
those are the ones that have descended and of our gods and goddesses. So, um, when I watched that, there's so much information that came in that I recognized and helped me really add a puzzle piece more of, of myself and my own journey and what I'm discovering about myself. But what I loved was the story about how Zeus was the good guys, right? Like Zeus was um, Enlil, Enlil, and that he was the God light, the Christ light on his side. And Zeus consequently had three daughters, the three graces. And isn't it something that that's who's on the cover of this book? The three graces, Zeus's daughters? Isn't that a nice little clue? about the lineage of David. Mm hmm mm hmm it, it is. The images of gods and goddesses. I believe this book, this is the second one I've had, and I was told it was for the kings and queens to sign the gods and goddesses. This is for the book for them, to honor them, to say thank you so much for everything you've done on behalf of mankind, the gods and goddesses, they, they'll come forward to sign it. Not, that'll start a journey, won't it? Won't that be something to sign in Zeus's daughters, the three graces, beauty, grace, and hope, I like to say, hope. And um, it's just amazing how everything comes together. Oh yes, and so, um, what I also wanted to say, um, there's something more about past lives there. <sighs> well, whatever it is, it's uh, it's gone right now. Okay, um, I'm going along here receiving this information, and what I'm saying today is really is I'm really understanding it more because so many people are trying to make sense of how can we all be Napoleon? How can we all be this? And I believe that that their uh, soul, fragments of their soul live on in you. That's why you keep thinking you're them. You keep thinking and you're being told that you, you're them. Well, you are, you carry their DNA. You carry the DNA of Napoleon you carry the DNA of Christ. You, it's either in you or not. And if you're carrying the DNA of Christ, right, that makes you sons and daughters of Christ, gods and goddesses. That's We're going to have that all revealed and who all who they are. That's what I'm saying. I think they'll start com coming forward um, and signing this book because the book's been inactive for the last three years. Pretty much. And um, it will call to it those who are meant to sign. Those gods and goddesses who are meant to find us, find me, and um, connect and um, come and be honored for the light work you've done. Come and be honored for all the light work that you've done and be recognized, take your place in heaven. Take your place, sit on your throne. Show them, yes, yes, I'm an eternal being. It was me all along. <laughs> I hit it really well, eh? With all the swearing and everything. You couldn't even tell I was an eternal being. Well, I was just trying to be like everybody else, right? Meanwhile, I've been sent here, putting my light out and my love out as much as I can, as hard as I could, wherever I found myself. And that's a light being. A light being has spent a lifetime being the light and not being aware of it, not being made aware of it. But really, right now, in the Christ consciousness, we're, let's see the, the thoughts that that awareness come now, that awareness of our past come forward because it gives us the, hey, this is who I am. You don't have to fight about who is number one, right? 
you, it, it's, it, it's like you've been Christed in your place in eternity. Be grateful and be in that eternalness. And there's a maturity and a godliness when you get to that place where there isn't any fighting. It's just, this is who I am and this is what I'm here to do. And, um, hmm. Wow, yes, it is quite an honor to be given the information of collecting the people in the house of David. That's what this is. It's collecting the lineage of King David. Oh my God, this is about collecting the lineage of King David. That's what this is. That's what this is. All those who are Davids from the house of David, from King David, this is the book to sign. This is from the house of David. And yes, it is from the house of David because I'm living in the house of King David. And this is in my house. So this is from the house of King David. Did you see that? Did you see universe step in and declare that and make a statement? This is the, this is a sign in book from the house of David of the lineage of King David. And if you're, if you're part of the lineage of King David, You'll sign this book. You'll sign this book. You'll be called to it. You'll be called to it. Oh yeah, I'm ending there. Because it's very, ooh, right? <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Okay, and the last thing, we're not ending. There's one more thing. I knew it was something really big I wanted to share. Um, because we were talking about the sign of, of revolution as things and worlds revealing themselves to you. And the other thing I wanted to share about what else was being revealed is like, I have this living room and I have a number of things in it. And I sit there and meditate all the time. And then I have different things I change around, like my yellow Buddha, you've probably seen it, my Himalayan salt, um, salt lamp. And then I've got a huge big wax pine cone of the, like the pineal gland, a great big pine cone. And then a beautiful swan representing the grace of God. So you've got the grace of God, you've got the Buddha, the wisdom, and you've got the pineal gland and the connection to the all knowing and the Himalayan salt. And I turn on my candle and boom, on the lights, what comes out in the shadows was the Himalayas. Now, I just happened to start reading this book again, The Secret of Shambhala, about the Himalayas. Just picked it up. Next thing you know, I'm lighting a candle in my living room and the Himalayas show up on my, on my wall. So what am I supposed to do with that? Right? It's like, they're showing up in your living room. You have access to the Himalayas right where you are. You don't have to travel there. They're coming to you. You're attracting them. I went, oh my God. I'm attracting the Himalayas to me. I'm attracting uh, oh, that which I am. I'm attracting that which I am to me. I am attracting that which I am to me. Oh, wow. There's the mantra. I am attracting to me that which I am. I am attracting to me that which I am. And there's the mantra for the book. So that those beings that are called and are being attracted to me to sign the book. I am being attracted. They are being attracted to me. I am being attracted to those that mirror my frequency. Those gods and goddesses that are here, log in. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know who you are. You've been out there on the internet doing your best, helping people and carrying people through this time. So uh, you have to figure out whether you're, you're a god or a goddess. And uh, didn't Ishmael give us a clue that there's a RH negative blood type? Hmm. Just heard that uh, was a clue. So um, I'm starting to put puzzle pieces together too. So yeah, 
why don't we just see where this goes? Oh yeah, one more thing, sorry, got off there. So the Himalayas appear on the wall in my living room and now I'm also reading about Egypt something and then it comes down to the Ben Ben bird. Well, the Ben Ben bird is Osiris and I've got a big huge Ben Ben bird, blue heron, in the corner of my living room and one on the wall. And then for Christmas, I got a pyramid. So in my living room, there's the Ben Ben bird, picture of the Ben Ben bird, and a copper pyramid. And then I'm sitting there last night, and all of a sudden it dawns on me, Osiris and Egypt are here. Osiris and Egypt are here because there's a representative of Osiris, which is the Ben Ben bird, saying, I'm Osiris. I went, oh my God, Osiris has been with me the whole time in my in my living room and I didn't receive the awareness of it. And that's what I want to tell you. Their awareness comes to you like, a, oh my God, it's given to you as a gift when you get it, when you go, um, oh my God, this was just revealed to me. It was just revealed. Revelation, we're re getting signs are being revealed. Things and visions are being revealed to us. So now I'm in the in the, my living room. I got the Himalayas over on my left, and now Egypt's appeared on my right. So the temples, right? The temples, the the pyramids, the mountain temples, right? They're they're coming. I'm attracting them to me. I'm attracting them to me. I saw something the other day and it said, um, don't chase, attract. Don't chase, attract. And um, I think I am the one that has been chasing, uh, it, you know, chasing after things, people, um, sometimes you want to make something happen so much and nothing's happened and you try and create something to happen and it's a bad idea and it never works out. Then you're better just to sit home and go within. <laughs> but you go and you make these efforts to try and help people and uh, raise their consciousness or, you know, and then if it doesn't have an impact, sometimes it's like, um, pardon me, I don't, I don't know where I was going about the impact. Hmm, it's just leaving, but it was, it's going to come back if it's meant to. Oh, come on, Sand. Why was it taken? Other dimension. Okay. Um. No. Hmm. Okay. We're talking about disclosure. And we're talking about information that you need to get will be given to you wherever you are in your home and your environment because then it'll light up it's it's like you never saw it before but boom now it's lit up and it's letting out its meaning the meaning of me having a blue heron in my living room in the 3d world it was one of my father-in-law's carvings and my husband wants it in the living room and so it's been in the corner right and, um, but yet I saw it for the first time in a whole new light. It turned over and I went, oh, wait a minute. I got a Ben Ben bird and the appearance of Osiris in my living room. And then when I got the copper pyramid for Christmas, it's like everything just came to me, but the awareness didn't light up till everything was together. The, the things that were on my table, my meditation table, I didn't realize that when I lit a candle in the dark, the light shone on it all in the Himalayan mountains 
appeared before me. So I'm saying to you, I'm breaking through uh, different realms, like the Shambhala. I think I'm making a discovery about the land of Shambhala, but um, it's coming to me where I stand. It's coming to me the great portals that you go through, the great veils you cross in the Himalayas and T Tibet and the other one more place that you go and um, there's portals for, what was, it, was it Japan? And that you go through the portals and these are the places that you go to. This is where people travel to. Uh, you know, it talks about the helpers that come to you along the way and you're able to start manifesting. Now I haven't, I know that's what is, I've read it before, so I know that helps you, but I've forgotten it, so I've got to reread it. But it's funny, my whole journey started with, with James Redfield and the Celestine Prophecy. And here I'm finding I'm in a bit of stuck situation because I don't know where I'm going from here. And all of a sudden it's like, order this book, reread this, because it's signposts, it's showing you, um, okay, when you get to Shambhala, look for this, this will happen. And he's in search of a portal, right? In Shambhala, like in, in the Himalayas. So the Himalayas are showing up at my house. So there's a connection between you wanting to go through that portal and the portal calling you. So maybe I'm calling people to this book and this portal's calling me to go through the realms, the dimensions, in, in order to um, uh, connect with everything. Okay. There's nothing better when you're sitting there and this stuff reveals itself to you. It's like the presence of Osiris is there through this bird. The presence of Egypt is there through your pyramid. The pre presence of the Himalayas are there with your Himalayan salt. It's, um, it's waking up to everything you do has a purpose and a reason. Everything around you can come alive at any moment and give you a message. I know that's wild, but it's like you're in this hypnotic matrix, but once in a while, boom, a message comes through or a knowing comes through and you go, oh, and you see that your physical environment is embracing a higher dimension of Egyptian environment uh, right where you are. So already my home is conforming and bringing Egypt into my home, bringing the Himalayans into my home. Um, I didn't know that was going to happen, but when it showed up, because I'm reading this book, I could recognize it. And that's what James Redfield did for me. Yay, we're back. Um, that's what James Redfield, I used to call him Ken all the time. I'm so apologetic, James. So apologetic. I don't know why it's Ken for me, but so <laughs> I just don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but James Redfield is somewhat of a, I would say, definitely one of the uh, 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 gods Holy smokes, talk about somebody that need, is, is going to sign this book. It's him. Does he ever deserve to sign it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's just maybe do some few videos and talk about who who really deserves to sign this book. Who's a real, who's really been doing the job, right? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do some short clips or something about some of the people right now, the, the light beings that have really done a great job. And they, you know, they deserve to really sign this book to honor them, right? So maybe we'll read out a few names, but this guy. And we have a connection because when I'm kind of stuck, uh, like right now, he's showing up. And when I started my journey uh, in 1993, 94, if I hadn't read The Celestine Prophecy, I would have been lost. I never would have figured it out. Never would have figured out um, what was going on for me, what was happening. It was, it's, it, it just gave me a map. It's like, this is happening. What do I do? What do I do? I don't know what I'm, what, what, what to do. And his book was like, read this map, read this map. 
this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Go, oh, okay, okay. So everything happens for a reason. Everybody I meet has a message. Um, okay, so, uh, and then you're led from one thing to the other according to your energy level and you're in the flow. And and it was so great to have that, that guideline uh, as I moved on, along on my journey. And so now he's bringing me farther. And I'm going to ask for those little daikinis to maybe round up some of these um, gods and goddesses and we'll get the ball rolling. And we'll start to honor them. We'll start to honor them, won't we? And let them log into the house of David. Ooh. I like that. And I also have had enough practice, just so you know. I've collected 500 already. It's taken me like 16 years. And still ongoing. But I know who's, who, it's not me that knows, the book knows. I might bring somebody in to sign the book, but sometimes they never sign. They refuse. And I might see some good in them that I see as angelic and worthy of signing, but sometimes they can't do it. And the, it's, it's, the book has its own alarm system. It only calls to it those that are meant to be in it. And if you're not, even though I might say, hey, you, you know, I think you, I think you should sign this. They'll go, oh, no, oh, no. I could sense they're uncomfortable right away. And then I go, okay, it's not meant for them. But sometimes it's because it's so big of an honor, they back off. Sometimes they're so overwhelmed with the truth of what this is and what I'm saying about them, they just go immediately into, I'm, un I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy of this. I, I can't sign that. That's not me. I've done this and this and this. Look what King David did. He murdered how many people? He's not without transgressions, and neither are we. Remember that. But he did begin his journey with five good stones. Five good rocks. Maybe he began or fought the dark side with five good planets. You know, it is God's grace that awakens you. You cannot do it for another because that's God's job. And as people awaken to the truth of what's being shared, hope, hope will grow. Because as we connect as one, it's the acknowledgement of the journey really so far and perhaps this book entails what are you going to do next like how are you going to take it forward how are we going to proceed with the next phase uh, that we're on like do we need a break do we need a celebration when we get to 5d i'm sure we'll have one but it's still it's the ongoing setting the stage and making sure everything's okay for mankind maybe before we leave Right? If we're going to leave, we've done our job, you know, maybe we're meant to stick around for a while. I guess me telling you this today kind of means I'll be sticking around for a while because I got a lot of signatures to get to say thank you for, you know, to the gods and goddesses that are, that have saved mankind. Belong in the house of David. Yeah, that's, uh. Hmm, it's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. And I'm seeing uh, crowds and people smiling and uh, hands up, you know, wanting to sign, wanting to sign. And I see each and every light. I see each and every light. Don't worry. 
when it's your turn, I, I will see you. When it's your turn to sign, you will come to me. You will come to me when it's your turn to sign. You'll be called to me. And you'll know it. You'll see it, you'll know it, and you'll go, I gotta sign that book. Where? <laughs> I gotta sign that book, there's something in me. And so we will create a situation or a meeting or something where we'll be able to uh, physically connect and, and you're able to sign that book, The House of David. Yeah, The Lineage of David. Hmm. So maybe we're the first uh, group bringing all the sons and daughters of Christ of Jesus and Mary, maybe we're the first group to collect all the Davids. You know, I mean, there's maybe a group of Matthew, a group of John, a group of, um, like, like, you know, Anthony Cleopatra, um, Alexander the Great, Leonardo da Vinci. Maybe there's some big... beings, being light beings that you're about to have uh, drawn to you. Hmm, I don't know why I said that. Okay, so I just wanted to say, don't worry about your turn. If you all of a sudden see this and you're going, oh, I, it's my turn to sign this, you will find your time. Now, some people who have watched my videos have already signed this book. It wasn't this one, it was another one. It was the first one. Um, which are the 500 souls that rose? And I believe, yeah, okay. So this is book has, a, has changed in that it's from, for God's kings and queens, I was told. Um, yes. So we'll see what happens. This is kind of cool, if it's a new adventure. And if that is, if this is my new job moving forward now is uh, signing those people into the house of David. <laughs> well, that will take my course, my life on a new course now, won't it? Which will be fun. Maybe sometimes people don't come to me. Maybe I meant to go to them. Depends whether or not they're on the ocean. <laughs> Aren't I funny? Well, Venus, you know, that Venus in the water, right? Okay. It was really difficult to get to make this video today. Maybe because there was a resistance in the universe, pressure and phone calls from people. It was like, it was like I felt everyone's trying to you know, the people that I did talk wanted to go on and on and on and on, right? And I'm going, look, good God, you can't listen to this. It'll drop your vibration. They're going to suck your energy. It's almost like these lower beings come in and they, 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 they're, 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 you know, taking the energy by you're draining you by going on and on at you, and you got to be able to stop and say, I got to do this first. I got to put this first. So it seemed like a whole morning of, could anything else get in the way? You know, and the moment my husband leaves and the house is free, my son's at work, he, he's gone, and then the sun comes home and you're going, I need my space, my energy. But it was kind of like, am I supposed to do this today? And I saw myself moving around all the obstacles, right? I went, okay, I'll move around all the obstacles and I'll keep, uh, I'll go and do what I know I meant to do today, which is... Um, which is which is make this uh, this video and bring this information in the order I shared it. <laughs> okay, uh, I really hope you got the one about um, revealing and revelation that things will reveal themselves. You don't have to do uh, anything other than be aware. Just be aware and sit in meditation is so great because you're sitting there listening to the stillness and the nothingness. So you want to listen for the stillness. It's like you're meditating. Now I'm trying to hear that stillness. I can hear it. And you're, it's easier outside, I find, because you can listen. It's like your mind, I want to listen to something. And then you go, okay, well, listen to the silence of the forest. And then you hear the silence of the forest. You're listening. 
What's the silence of the forest sound like? So you're kind of listening to it. So now you're listening to the stillness. And it, uh, I'm doing my best to train myself to listen to stillness longer and longer and longer because the last, one of those wonderful times I can remember was last a year ago, November, and I was standing out at the first snowstorm and I was right beside a forest. And I'd had some fruit and it was snowing and, 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 the, the, and, and I walked outside, I got all dressed and I walked outside and I stood at the edge of the forest and I was standing in the awe-ness of what was before me. It was, I could, it, it was like I couldn't take in the magnitude of the cedars and the snow and how the cedars commanded the entrance to the forest. And I couldn't even ask for admission. I couldn't even move into the forest. I was so in awe of how the forest was being protected and how you couldn't enter in unless you asked permission to enter into the stillness, into the forest. And when I was able to move and go into the stillness of the forest, there's no one around. The snow was just falling on the forest. First fall snow, no, nothing, nobody, nobody in that whole forest. And there was no sound and there was no sound. It was so silent and so still. And I'm going deeper and deeper into listening to the stillness. And then I did my best to go into all the energy that was in between the trees. And well, it was more like a presence of the trees and the energy and the stillness. And then all of a sudden I, I turn to my left and it was the throne room of God and it was revealed to me. If you were in the forest, you'd walk through and just think it was a clump of trees. But in the stillness beyond the veil, like the Himalayas and Osiris show up, so did the throne room of God. And the throne room of God opened itself up by letting me know there's a path for you to follow. And it leads into the throne room of God. And I go, okay. So I walk the little path and I walk into this throne room of God. And it's like a, a circle of trees, a circle of trees all around me. And then there's one, like a tree forward here, a tree, another tree here. There's over two more trees coming this way. And then a stump right there. And it was sit down on the throne. Sit down on the throne. You're in the throne room of God. And this is God's throne. Sit down on the throne. And I'm sitting on the throne and looking at the snow and listening to the stillness and knowing that I was sitting in the throne room of God. I am sitting in the throne room of God. And this is what it looks like. It looks like what's right in front of me. Because what's right in front of me is the throne room of God. So I received the knowing it's the throne room of God, and now I'm sitting in the throne room of God. And oh, I'm trying to think what thoughts I had, but It was just it was just still and quiet and I knew I it's like I made it into the throne room of God. So I know what it's like in the throne room of God now. It's so beautiful and it's like a forest. That was my revelation. That's how the throne room of God revealed itself to me. I'm in Revelation and if I were to write a chapter in Revelation this would be Sandra Embleton's revelation of the throne room of God because God revealed to me the throne room in that moment right where I was and it created this space 
that I could enter into and be with God. And, and be honored to be able to sit on the throne of God. <laughs> and then I was told that um, um, I was allowed. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm just going to say the end result was that this individual in history and eternity got to worship at the foot of the goddess. And it was uh, Krishna, Harry Krishna, sitting right beside me later that night, holographically. So it was an affirmation after being in the throne room of God as I sat on the throne of God that the next thing that would follow would be Krishna worshiping at my feet. I know this sounds wild, but it really happened. <laughs> I just, I, uh, I have these things happen to me. Okay, enough for now. What a wild video. It went a lot of places. But, um, yeah, I'm, oh, there was a lot of stuff coming in. And, there, and I'd like to say there's more, but what came in and how it came in was how it was supposed to be said and shared. Okay, this is my new piece. Isn't she beautiful? I, I'm, I really feel she's telling me her name is um, Sophia, Sophie, Sophia, the voice of God. Sophia, the voice of God on the planet. The voice of God on the planet. That's what I was told I was. When Christ uh, uh, left, he said to me, uh, you're the voice of God on the planet. It was said, yes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think it, I'm just trying to remember whereabouts in the book I put that, if and if I did. Okay, so now, I feel <laughs> protected and um, I see myself changing into who it is that I am. In the last video, um, I saw myself so differently. And if you go through my videos over the past 10 years, you'll, you'll just watch me morph and change into that which I am. <laughs> okay, enough said. Thank you for... Uh, Letting me share.